When it comes to receiving a new diagnosis of prostate cancer, men and their loved ones want the diagnosis to be accurate, personalized, and delivered in a timely fashion. You'll definitely want to stick around today for a very special guest who will get you up to speed with artificial intelligence and how it is being deployed as we battle prostate cancer. So stick around. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is the question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On the podcast, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. The Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. We are very excited to have Joseph Mosul joining us today on the podcast. He is the CEO and co-founder of Ibex Medical Analytics. Together with co-founder and chief technology officer, Heim Linhart, he embarked on a journey to transform cancer diagnosis by empowering pathologists with AI insights that help improve diagnostic accuracy, efficiency, and turnaround times. His career in the tech industry has spanned more than 20 years starting off in software development and product management followed with leadership positions in startups and large multinational corporations, where he has led products from inception all the way to maturity. Joseph has also held a tenure in the nonprofit sector, serving as Managing Director of Israel's National Ecosystem Assessment Program. Joseph holds a Master of Science in Computer Science from Tel Aviv University and a Master of Science in Environmental Science from VU Amsterdam. Joseph, welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Hi, thank you for having me, Dr. Pullman. Ibex Medical Analytics has certainly been a pioneer in developing cancer diagnostic tools and leveraging artificial intelligence or AI in battling the epidemic of cancer. I'm excited for our listeners to learn more about your technology. I was going to see if you could share with our listeners a bit about Ibex, including how did you come to start the company and what are you focused on? Yeah. So we started the company, me and my, my co-founder, exactly more or less seven years ago today. And it all started with a realization. We were really new to the domain, to computer scientists. And what we learned was about the existence of a technology called digital pathology. And we saw an opportunity there. There were a lot of companies already doing AI and radiology. And there was, we saw an opportunity there to be doing something new. And there were a few others who had the same insight and at the same time. So it's kind of this class of 2016, 2017 of companies in this domain. That was kind of the initial impetus to, for starting the company. And we pretty quickly locked down on prostate as a good use case. And we did hire a pathologist to work with us. So that was the third uh, employee in the company. We got into it. We developed our first AI algorithm for prostate cancer. And we like to get things running out in the field uh, quickly. So by 2018, we already had our first product running in a very large pathology lab. And within a week of uh, this running, we had a case that was diagnosed as benign by the practicing pathologist. And the algorithm correctly showed that this was actually low-grade cancer. And that was, you know, if it happens so quickly, we made sense that this is not something extremely rare. And then as it kept on running, and since then the technology is already deployed in over 100 labs, yeah, we've learned that. Making these kind of, there's no other way to characterize them, but severe diagnostic error is not something rare. So, well, people know that pathologists make mistakes, but we have a pretty good grasp of how often and how much. And specifically in prostate cancer, I think that there is a lot of material to cover. It's quite tedious and it's uh, more prone even than other tissue types. And that was what got us started. And since then, we've developed two other tissue types and added a lot more capabilities to prostate cancer. As I mentioned, deployed it in many places. Prostate cancer is the second most commonly occurring cancer in men with more than a million new cases each year here on the podcast. We are continually working on keeping our listeners up to speed with the latest technology. How does IBEX's AI solution impact urology 
And what should urologists and patients know about the technology? Yeah, so I think there's two elements which are relevant for urologists and even more so for patients. And one is to realize that there is potential there for misdiagnosing a cancer, missing a cancer. Just to give some idea, we see in really, let's say, Europathologists, really specialists, and kind of all they do, then we see error rate, which should go maybe between 1% to 3%. But then in labs, which are more generalists, we've seen numbers as up as 10% error rate. Maybe that number sink in for a moment. If uh, think of having, let's say, your own biopsy at a lab where there's a 1 in 10 chance that you'll get the wrong diagnosis, it's not a comforting thought. And then also what's very tricky, as you know, and in prostate cancer is Gleason grading. And that's well known. There's a lot of kind of inter-observer variability in this. And again, this is more pronounced for the non-specialist pathologist. If you kind of go to the experts, they do typically converge on the same number. And what we hear from urologists that they often, they find themselves normalizing on the practicing pathologist who's practicing on that week. So they know this pathologist some kind of cut is a bit more conservative and calls kind of higher grading this one. And they kind of fine tune the way they treat the report based on kind of their experience with a specific pathologist. And the advantage of a technology like ours is that beyond just being accurate, you always will get the same result for the same case. So there's kind of a measure of objectivity that's there, which is harder to achieve with human pathologists. Maybe a point which is really important to clarify right now, our technology is not replacing pathologists. It's a tool that you can think of it. It's in a way no different than IHC stains. It's a tool which helps pathologists diagnose better and point their attention in areas where they need to look. And everything that I'm saying about higher accuracy and objectivity refers not to the algorithm as standalone. That's not the studies that we do. But basically, you should think of the pathologist and the algorithm as a closed unit. And pathologists plus the algorithm perform better than pathologists without that. That's a point which is really important to understand. So I think this is something for the urology practice to have in mind. I think given kind of the the error rates and kind of the challenges with the grading, I think there's very significant benefits for, for patients. And I would think that urologists should be asking for this technology. Well, as a urologist, I'm certainly excited about the technology and we'll definitely be asking about it uh, with our pathology group. Now, being able to enhance the accuracy of cancer diagnosis as well as improve the efficiency for the pathologist is really, I believe, paramount to improving the quality of cancer care. Now, lastly, I was going to see if we could talk a little bit about how does IBEX impact health economics? Yeah, so there's a, the impact on health economics is kind of different levels. One is you can think just at the level of the pathology lab. And then we help streamline the operations there. We help we reduce the turnaround time. In a way, the way that there's, we help the pathologist do their diagnosis faster and more accurately. But we're also, you could think of the technology as now another pathologist that can do other things in the lab where you couldn't normally deploy a pathologist, like triage the cases. So you normally you wouldn't hire a pathologist to triage the cases. There's just Well, there's a big shortage in pathologists. So there's a lot of other opportunities to deploy the technology to, let's say, optimize the workings of this, let's call it for a moment, a factory, the pathology lab. There's an opportunity there. Now there's also, let's go for a moment, outside of the scope just of the pathology lab and just look at it as kind of wider healthcare perspective. And here, obviously, the earlier, if we can catch a patient with early stage prostate cancer, still kind of low grade, and make sure that person is now on active surveillance, or in some cases, the kind of errors that we catch is misgrading the cancer. So we make sure the patient is getting the right kind of of treatment. Every time we do that, we obviously have a substantial impact on the, the patient outcome and the patient's quality of life and life expectancy. But also from the health economics perspective, we're able to treat the cancer earlier on and at a lower cost for the healthcare system. Well, thank you so much for getting our listeners up to speed today on your AI-based tools for cancer diagnostics and pathology specifically and uh, for prostate cancer. Any parting thoughts today for our listeners? Yeah, I think one thing that I really want people to understand, there's a lot of buzz about AI and AI in healthcare. And I think some people still have the sense that it's just a buzz right now. 
And my message to your listeners that this is reality. This is happening today. There are, as I said, around 100 labs around the world which are using this on a daily basis as part of their practice. And maybe by way of interesting anecdote, we have all of the NHS trusts in Wales, for instance, have deployed our technology. And a while ago, they had this incident where they had an issue with their digital pathology scanner. So they couldn't use the AI. They stopped signing out prostate cases for a few days until they could get the scanner back online. So once they started using it, they feel it's really something which is absolutely necessary. So, and I think this realization, it's now still fairly new technology, but I'm very, very confident that this will become standard medical practice. And how can providers and patients get more information on IBEX? Well, you can visit our website www.ibex-ai.com. You can read some academic publications. We had a publication together with UPMC, which came out in the Lancet a few years ago. I recommend reading that. We'll make sure to get you know, links to all of those in our show notes as well as you know your LinkedIn page and videos on YouTube as well. So I think that'd be great. Mm-hmm. So, well, thank you again for joining us today on the Prost Health Podcast. We appreciate you taking you know time out of your busy schedule to you know share your wisdom with us today on the for all our listeners. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. For those of you wanting to dive in even deeper, make sure to check out the Prostate Health Academy, which offers comprehensive and easy to navigate lessons that I have prepared for you. There's also an active private community forum, and I am there every day providing support, insight, and answering questions. To learn more, just go to www prostatehealthacademy.com. Click on join now. Well, that's it for today. We will see you at the next episode.